look at this week we're talking about um, the energy cycle all right so we're going to talk about how cells use photosynthesis in cellular respiration to make cellular energy or atp so here's our objective so what you're going to learn for the week and the vocab of the week remember you don't have to write this slide down okay it's the vocab that's on quizlet and the objectives are just so you're going to be able to explain the relationship between cellular respiration and photosynthesis you should be able to list what goes in and what comes out of cellular respiration you should be able to tell me why atp is important um, and then describe how food molecules are going to be used um, to make atp so uh, let's remember things that we've talked about all the way up to this point since we started cells organisms must be able to create protein be able to digest food um, digest food absorb and transport nutrients and then regulate themselves to maintain homeostasis okay and that's what those pictures are right there and to do all of those things oh, the last one grow maintain and repair themselves and to do all of those things cells need energy okay so the energy molecule for cells is atp <laughs> ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. And when you look at this picture here, okay, these um, these guys, these little circles right here, these guys, these are your phosphate molecules. These are three phosphate molecules, okay? And there's the rest of the ATP is going to be on the other side. So down in this corner, you can see it, right? There's the rest of the ATP molecule. And it kind of looks like um, a... Um, nitrogenous base from DNA because they're all nucleic acids. Okay, so this is a nucleic acid. It has a phosphate, a sugar, and then um, a base, right? So the base is this part, right? And then this is the sugar, and then the three phosphates of these three guys we're looking at right there. And all living things are going to make ATP using um, cellular respiration, okay? They could do it aerobically. With aerobic, think of aerobics has oxygen, and then anaerobic, the N, it has no oxygen, all right? So they can either do cellular respiration with oxygen present or without. We're going to focus on the aerobic because that's the type that most organisms do to get the most ATP. All right, and ATP in general is going to cycle, okay? So ATP, you can remove or add phosphates to it, all right? When you add a phosphate, it stores energy, and when you remove a phosphate, it's going to give energy, all right? So it releases energy. So you store it, you add the phosphate on, and then when you cut the phosphate off, it's going to release energy. So how do we make ATP? So chloroplasts and mitochondria are going to work together to make first glucose and then turn glucose into ATP. And glucose is just a sugar. All right. And this is the energy cycle. So what we're looking at here is the energy cycle. Okay. So let's start up top. All right. There's carbon dioxide in the air and we have water. Okay. Let's start with carbon dioxide and water. And we have autotrophs which make their own food. These are plants, right? Plants, plants do photosynthesis. They take in that CO2 in that water and then they give out oxygen that we're gonna breathe and glucose that we eat, okay? So photosynthesis takes in carbon dioxide and water. It gives out oxygen and glucose, right? Because it just needs sunlight. Sun, sun, sun. Let's add that in there. Um, so we get oxygen and glucose from photosynthesis that goes into autotrophs and heterotrophs. This is plants and animals, and they do cellular respiration, right, in their mitochondria. And then cellular respiration is going to produce carbon dioxide, which goes back into the air. It produces water, and it also produces at this point, this is where we get our ATP. ATP. Okay. So photosynthesis is done by autotrophs. Cellular respiration is done by autotrophs and heterotrophs. Photosynthesis happens in the chloroplast. Cellular respiration happens in the mitochondria. Right? The reactants, so what goes into photosynthesis is carbon dioxide and water. What comes out of photosynthesis is glucose and oxygen. And now look, that glucose and oxygen that just came out, we then use in cellular respiration. So it goes into the mitochondria for cellular respiration. And then what comes out of the mitochondria is water, carbon dioxide, and that all-important molecule that we want to know or that we're trying to get to is ATP. Okay, does that make sense? And then it says, when comparing plants and animal cells, that little comic strip on the bottom, plant cells can do photosynthesis, right? They're getting energy from the sun. And then it says, but 
both plant and animal cells prefer um, perform cellular respiration. So plants do both, right? Where animals only do cellular respiration. So here is our equation. And I want you to write down the equation for cellular respiration and photosynthesis in your notebooks, right? You can add these arrows to show how everything is used. So my first is my glucose, right? This C68206. And my glucose goes down here. So it goes into cellular respiration. It comes out of photosynthesis. My 6O2, my oxygen, goes into cellular respiration. It comes out of photosynthesis, right? My products of cellular respiration, what comes out, I breathe out carbon dioxide, which actually plants then pick up and use for photosynthesis. And I release water, which plants then pick up and use for photosynthesis. The only difference is cellular respiration is going to give you your ATP and photosynthesis is going to use sunlight, right? So see how they're like crisscrossed? The reactants of cellular respiration are the products of photosynthesis and the products of cellular respiration are the reactants of photosynthesis. Make sure you get those, both of those equations into your notebook because you're going to be responsible for those. And then where do we get our oxygen and glucose? So we know we need oxygen and glucose, but how does that even get into our bodies? So glucose is going to be supplied by our digestive system. So when our food in our bodies is broken down, right, and nutrients are absorbed or transported, what we did last week, transported from the small intestines into the body and into the blood, they then go to the cells. And that's how we get our glucose. Our oxygen, we did this last week too, right, is transported when we inhale. Oxygen goes to our lungs. From our lungs, it then diffuses into our blood, right? Diffusion is one of those passive transport. Once it's in our blood, it gets sent to the cells, okay? So those are our big transports, which then go to our little putting things away, right? So our nutrients, our food is eaten, it's ingested, right? And this picture has our carbohydrates, our fats and our proteins that are in all the foods we eat right? They're all broken down to our bodies. So these are their monomers. This is like right back from the beginning of the year. So these are their monomers. These are the organic macromolecules that make them up, right? And then they're all transported through the blood into the mitochondria and the body cells. So we can do cellular respiration and we can make ATP. The point of all of this is to make ATP because if we don't have that, our bodies can't run, right? We need ATP for our bodies to run. Right, and then oxygen, if we look at this picture here, the oxygen is going to go in, right? It goes into the lungs. In the lungs, the oxygen is going to be dropped off and brought to the, from the blood to the muscles. In the muscle cells, we do cellular respiration right here. We get our ATP, right? And then carbon dioxide is a waste product. It gets sent back to the lungs using the blood, and it exhales out of the body. So it's taken in by the lungs. It's transported through the blood, the mitochondria, and the body cells. I wish I did a little bit more on that one, right? Well, I taught you before, but it's transported to the mitochondria and the body cells. And then the mitochondria make ATP with it. And then that um, excess, that CO2 is transported back through the blood and exhales when you exhale. Okay. So then this is in the cell. I guess this does what we were just saying is in our body cells, oxygen and nutrients. So we have our oxygen, right? And our glucose, oxygen and nutrients are going to be used for aerobic cellular respiration, right? So we're going to take those in our mitochondria, in our cell, we're going to make energy. And remember energy is ATP. We're going to make energy, right? And then we're going to exhale that carbon dioxide and release that water, okay? And we use that ATP just to make the body function because we can't do our necessary functions without it, all right? So let's make sure you guys get all your notes from this lecture, all right? Draw some pictures on the opposite sides of the page, um, and you can ask me questions, okay? Thanks, guys.